get ready to go right into the word of the Lord on tonight. Going to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. And then we're going to go over to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. And let's read 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. It says, Wherefore, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end. For the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. And then we're going to go over to Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 through 24. Amen. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, which after God put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And that's what I want to talk about on tonight. Holiness. Holiness is still right. Holiness is right. Then you said, well, pastor, what do you mean by the word holiness? Like when I was in the church um, years ago, when we would say holy, people identified us as those people with the long dresses on, with the thick stockings on, with no jewelry on, just a wedding band, no clothes in shoes. You didn't wear your shoes with your toes out, long sleeves, and absolutely no makeup. But I want you to know that that is not holiness. That's the picture that they painted of us. And even the men say, well, that was, that's just pastor, that's the latest. What did the men do? They only wore white shirts. They didn't wear colored shirts or striped shirts, white shirts. They had black, brown, or navy suits or pants. Hallelujah. They didn't come with the lavender suits on. Neither did they come to church in a red suit. So we had equated holiness with a certain look. <clears throat> But what does holiness really mean? It means that we are changed. We are set apart from the world to God for his use. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. If we are in Christ, then we are new creatures. And the old things, the old desires, the old wants passes away. And you no longer desire to do those things that you knew was contrary to the word of the Lord. And simply meaning, I said like this, is that for to say that you are holy, there's got to be a difference in your life. There's got to be a difference. When you say you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, there ought to be a difference because the word of God say, if you be in Christ, you're a new creature and all the old things will pass away. And after salvation, when we receive Christ, Salvation, once we are delivered, we don't stay the same. Our mouths get saved. Our tongue gets saved. Mm -hmm. Our desires is different, it's changed. Wanted to be near God, wanted to be with the people of God has changed. Now, what is a holy life? First of all, a holy life <clears throat> is to be totally committed to God. 
God first. God first. That's a holy life. Totally committed to God. And God is holy and his holiness demands our commitment to holiness. You cannot be holy one day and a backslider the next day. Let's look at John chapter five, verse five. St. John five and five. When Jesus healed the crippled man at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus told him, behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. Thou have been made whole. You have been healed. You have become a new creature in Christ. And for you not to go back to that old way of living. And when Jesus, we think about the woman that was caught in adultery in John 8 and 11. When Jesus, when everybody else wanted to condemn her, but when she went to Jesus, he said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. In both of those examples, they were forgiven and restored to a relationship with God. When you have committed your life to Christ, when you have given yourself over to Christ, hallelujah, glory to God, they, it, your relationship with God has been restored and you are forgiven. Not what other folks say, because folks, they look at the outward appearance. They can't tell you whether your heart is clean or not. But you got to want to know for yourself that I am in right relationship with God. That woman at the caught in adultery and the man up at the pool of Bethesda, they were both told after receiving their deliverance, after receiving their healing, to go and live a different life. And God is calling for his people, his children, <clears throat> those who call on the name of the Lord, to go and live a different life. All of that, well, all life that we had would not be entertained by us anymore. Our desire should be for that of the Lord. <clears throat> Simply meaning that we can't leave Christ at the church door on Sundays when we go out. God has to be a part of all of our life. He's got to be a part of our work. He's got to be a part of our family. And, and friends and decisions and even small problems. God wants all of us. He don't want pieces. He wants all of us. And we and he commanded us, be ye holy, for I am holy. He didn't ask a question. He commanded us to be holy. We must be different people of God, saints of God, agape. And our behavior, our behavior has to change. The goals that we have for our life has to change because it's got to be in alignment with what the word of God says. Our behavior change, our goals change, and our desires change. Let's look at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. I'm gonna, just going to read the second verse. And it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We, it's gotta be a difference between the people of God and the world. There must be a difference between clean and unclean. There is a difference between holy and unholy. Now, how does this difference come place, take place? Because our mind has become transformed. That's why we say we have, I give my body, I give my heart, my soul, and my mind over to God. Lord, use me. Get in my mind so that I would think right. Because some of us are not thinking right. We jump to every little thing. If it's confusion, we write there on it. Glory to God. 
But if my mind is on Christ, I'm going to speak the things of God. And not, it may be confusion going on, but when I walk in, peace walk in. There's a difference between clean and unclean, holy and unholy. But you say, Pastor, how do we live a holy life? I'm just 20 years old. How can I live a holy life? I haven't lived. Don't let nobody tell you that lie. You haven't lived. I'm living good because of Christ. I am here because of him. First of all, to live a holy life, you got to be in complete obedience to God. That's why I say, this is why I say that we have to give God all of us. He don't want part of us. He wants all of us. And then we must be filled with his Holy Spirit. And only when our will is submission, is in submission to his world, will, can he work in us until we submit to God. Until we submit, until we give ourselves over to him, he cannot work in us. Mm. That's what my spirit of scripture says. I, forget, I think it's in Romans, not sure. We have a form of godliness but not denying the power thereof. Glory to God. I'm doing the things. I got a form of godliness, but I have no power. Why don't I have power? Because I haven't submitted myself to him. Submit ourselves to God and he can and he will work in us. <clears throat> now, the scripture that I read, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. I'm going to read it in the NIV version. It says, therefore, with minds, with our minds that are alert and fully sober, sober mind, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed as his coming, at his coming. The 14th verse says, as obedient children, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Well, why don't how how do I not conform to those evil desires that I once had before salvation? Because I'm obedient to the word of God. As obedient children, we must learn to be obedient. You know, we all want our children to be obey, obedient. You've been disobedient. I what about God? He says, I want my children to be obedient obedient unto me. And we're not, we would not get anywhere until we become fully submissive and obedience to God. In Ephesians 4, chapter 4, verses 22 through 24 says, put off concerning, concerning your former conduct. Now, if every other word of your mouth before you accepted Christ, it came up as a profane Cuss work. The scripture says, put off concerning your former conduct. If you, your former self, before you met Christ, if you were a busybody, glory to God. If if, if you were a slanderer, a backbiter, mm, glory to God. Come on now, such as some of us. He says, put off the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. You wonder why it seems as things are getting worse and worse now. I'll tell you why. Because when you let sin reign, it grows. That's just like a cancer. The cancer is not going to stay in your fingertip, but it's going to spread throughout your body. It's going to get in the lymphatic system. And that lymphatic system is like a cleanser for the blood. And that cancer is spreading throughout the body. So that's why the Bible said, put on your old conduct, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We must ask God to renew our mind. Keep my mind, God. Glory to God. Keep my mind. 
The blood of Jesus cover my mind, cover my children's mind, cover my grandchildren's mind as they go out to school. Glory to God. You have to do that now because even some of the things that you're hearing and seeing on TV, if your mind is not renewed, that thing will get into your spirit. Glory to God. And you'll find yourself tolerating sin. Why? Because it got into you. So Lord, renew my mind. Renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then I like for that 24th verse says, put on the new man, which was created according to God. We have a choice. We want to say the devil made me do it. Baby doll, you had a choice. You cho chose to do whatever it was that you did. You had a choice. Put on the new man, which was created according to God mm. and in righteousness and true holiness. I went, I went there today, Lord, why are you saying true holiness? Because it's a false holiness going on out here. The holy we have now is you can do anything you want to do. Glory to God. That is not true holiness. You ain't got to be born again. We got to be a new person in Christ Jesus. True holiness. And then we say, Lord, guard my mind so that this mess won't get in there. Mm, glory to God. And let me tell you something, saints. Praising God and prancing and dancing and, and giving God the glory is not true holiness. It's a release for us. Oh, yes, it is. It, it rejuvenates us. But just because we dance to the music does not say mean that we have been delivered or that we have accepted salvation, the salvation of Christ. Because man does not have the ability to produce holiness. I can preach about holiness all day long. Every time you see me talk about holiness, but I don't have the ability to produce holiness in you. Only God can do that. Glory to God. And the Holy Spirit and the, and the Son can get in the inside of us. John 1 and 12 says, as many as received him, you got to receive him. You got to make the choice. To them, he gave the right to become children of God. As many as received him, only those who accepted him, did he give the right to become one of his children. Now, if you have not accepted him, you don't have the right as a child of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, <clears throat> nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. My God, it is God who saves us. It is God who delivers us. It is the Holy Spirit that washes us clean. And we cannot add to God's holiness or his righteousness by our own works. I can't add to my own holiness or my righteousness by my own work because I can't do that work. It says Ephesians 4 and 24 says, put on the new man, which was created according to God in righteousness and true holiness. Well, Pastor, how am I going to find about the, the new man? You read the word of God. And as we grow and we read the word of God, it will get down on the inside of us and you will find your responses being based on the word of God. Once again, I say that holiness comes from God and not from man. <clears throat> holiness comes from God and not man. Oh, glory to God. Many of us, our baby saints are kept babies forever. With the pastors telling them everything they should or should not do. When you are first born, yes, the word of God. The pastors say, well, this is, you know, we do this and we do that. But after a while, that baby got to grow up and start reading the word for himself. And it gets down in them. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit is given to guide us. Once again, holiness is a result 
of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And so, but Pastor, if the Holy Spirit is living inside of me, inside of me, and holiness is the result of the Holy Spirit living inside of me, it means that I can't put the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit on a shelf and do what I want to do and then come back and pick him up. I'm afraid that in that judgment day, there are going to be many, many. And you say, well, Lord, I call on your name. I did. And he's going to say, I don't know you. I don't know you. Because you can serve me when you want to. And when you don't, you don't serve me. So the holiness is a result of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And because the Holy Spirit is living, living in the inside of me, he's leading me and he's guiding me. But our problem is we over talk the Holy Spirit. He's trying to talk to us, talk us off the ledge, glory to God. And we over talk the Holy Ghost. But that's still a small voice that's telling you, don't do it. Don't say nothing. Glory to God. Just pray. You got to shut up. And do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. You can't keep going on because you're going to find yourself in a mess. Now, holiness is not an option. It is a command that we are to implement in all areas of our lives. So, Pastor, why do you say it's a command? Because in 1 Peter, that 16th verse says, but as he who have called you is holy. You be holy in all manner of your conduct because it is written, I command you to be holy. If your child of mine be holy, be holy for I am holy. Holiness is not an option. And I want to tell you tonight, saints, lift up your heads and proudly say, I am Holy Ghost filled. I believe in holiness. Holiness, I, I live a holy life. I know that we're in the era now that we say, well, I am Pentecostal because it sounds good. <clears throat> I am Pentecostal because it sounds good. But sometimes you say, I am holy. Holiness is my way of life because holiness is not an option. And when we look at that term holiness, and I am almost through, says God is holy. God is holy. And holiness means conformity to the character and will of God. Holiness means conformity to the character and will of God. It means, holiness means that we think as God thinks. We love what God loves. We hate what God hates. And we act as Christ would act. Glory to God. We think what the Lord thinks. We love what God loves. We hate what he hates. We ought to hate sin. There ought to be a hatred in every child of God's life for sin. We, we, we can't entertain sin. I don't care who it is. You got to call it like it is. Hating what God hates and acting as Christ will act. How many of us have acted out of character that Christ would not have acted that way? Acting the way that Christ will act. Holiness means having the mind of Christ. When we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, it says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And then Philippians chapter two, verse five. Philippians chapter two, verse five says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ, when we accept him as Lord and Savior, as our deliverer, as our healer, the mind of Christ should be in us. Now, when we look at the scripture, um, Old Testament, the concept of holiness in the Old Testament was separation from and dedication to 
What do you mean? For example, the Sabbath in the Old Testament was holy because it was separated from work. The Sabbath was holy because it was separated from travel and other activities, and the Sabbath was dedicated to rest. This is found in the Old Testament. When we look at the um, Jewish tradition, come, come six o'clock Friday evening till the latter day, just like when Jesus died on that cross, they had to hurry up and get him in the ground because the Sabbath day, we don't do nothing but rest and meditate on the things of God. God commanded his people to be holy, even in the Old Testament. Look at Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. God commanded his people to be holy. That 44th verse says, for I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate yourselves and you shall be holy for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any creepy thing that creeps on the earth. For I am the Lord your God. You are therefore to consecrate yourselves and you shall be holy for I am holy. What does that tell me in 2024? I can't participate in everything that these folks are doing now. Mm -mm. I cannot participate in everything because God called me to be holy. And he would not, I would not find my Lord sitting up in the club. Ooh. There was a young lady that told me, and you all may remember a few years back, that um, her ministry was to the club. She goes to the club to say to myself, you ain't ministering, you sit at the bar. No, you're not ministering, baby doll. Ooh. Be ye holy, for I am holy. You see how people get it twisted? By the renewing of your mind, because somewhere the seed was sown in her. The longest I mention something about God, I can do what I want to do. But when you love God and when the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you and when God is the head of your life, you cannot do any and everything you want to do. You can't even, can't even say what you want to say half the time. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So those, 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 those don't get mad at me that fly off at a handle. When the wind blow, glory to God, you need to go back to the altar. For I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourself. And people of God, we need to consecrate ourselves. What do you mean by consecrate? I'm going to get in the word. I'm going to set time for the word of God. I'm going to turn a plate down. Pastor don't have to put me on a 20 day, 21 day fast because I'm going to turn down my plate. The Church of God at Christ Fast Days is Tuesday and Friday. Every Tuesday and Friday, I'm going to fast. I'm turning down my plate because I want to get more of him. I want to be holier. Glory to God. I want to be clean. I want when people to see me, they see Christ. I don't care where I am. When they see me, I want them to see Christ. So God commanded his people to be holy, even in the Old Testament separated from all people and dedicated to the worship of the one and true God. That is our issue. We like to not be separated because we want to be with the crowd. But sometimes you got to walk this pathway by yourself. Glory to God. And you were like, I, I was praying the other day and I said, Lord, I really don't have any close, close, close friends. Oh, God, but yes, you are my friends, but I'm talking about someone that I can share with on my, because I don't talk to members as I would friendship. And the Lord said, as long as I'm with you, you can talk to me all day and all night. Glory to God. And you know what? My soul got happy and I went to, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you because I could have been outside. Mm. Lord, I thank you because, Lord, you could have chose somebody else to save them, but you saved me. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Ephesians and I'm going to summarize this up. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. And I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. Put off. You got to make the effort to put off concerning your former conduct. There's got to be a difference when you meet God. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust 
and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Continue to pray for your mind. Pray for your children's mind. Pray for your grandchildren's mind. Mm. And put on the new man, which was created according to God in righteousness and true holiness. I want to be truly holy because I'm living this life to live again. Holiness means simply means to imitate Christ and to be Christ-like. Have we been Christ-like all day? Christ-like today? Glory to God all day long. Hallelujah. James 4 and 4 says, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Y'all write that scripture down and read it for yourself. Now, what is in enmity? Let me explain. Enmity is the state or feeling of being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. So James 4 and 4 says, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity, it's hostile to God. And whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. I don't want to be an enemy of God. Mm -mm. Because if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. As saints, we need to avoid three areas of major areas of temptation. And my time is just about out. No, what we gotta, what 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 do we gotta focus in on that we don't be tempted with? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride. First John chapter two, verse fifteen to sixteen. First John chapter two, verse fifteen through sixteen says. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. How plainer can you get? Ooh. For all that is in the world, the, this is what the, the Lord has said, this is what's in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. The purpose of holiness or the standards of holiness is to protect us from becoming a part of the world. It's a scripture that says, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. I'm not telling you to go on some island and live by yourself. I'm in the world. I can communicate with and do what I need to do, but I am not of the world. Simply me, I don't do what the world does. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. I would just want you to know tonight, and I'm moving swiftly through here, The holiness is still right. Holiness is right. Not just to dance, but holiness is right. For holiness to say you're holy, you got to have the light. What your life speaks about? What does your life speak about you? Is it holy? Hallelujah. John 8 and 32 says, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And you have heard on tonight that holiness is still right. God still requires his people to be holy people. Glory to God. Set apart and meet for the master's use. My life is set apart for God. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, I just want to go and enjoy myself. I can enjoy myself with the saints of God. Because when I finish shouting on Sundays, I'll be tired. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And sometimes we need to ask God, Lord, touch my spirit. This restless spirit that I have. Hallelujah. Renew my mind. Renew my thought process because I want even my mind to be holy and to think the things of God. And Father, we thank you for the lesson on tonight, <clears throat> reminding us that holiness is right, that holiness is still right, regardless of what the world says, regardless of what the religious world says. We know according to your word that you called us to be holy. 
And now, Father, we commit ourselves back to you. We commit our lives back to you. Cover us, cover our minds, God. Renew our minds in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you now. We thank you for the people of God. We thank you for everyone that is listening to my voice on tonight. Help us, God, to be holy men and women. God, we know because you told us in your word, be ye holy, for I am holy. And that is our desire, is to be holy. And we bless you. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our way maker. We thank you for being our deliverer. God, we thank you for being our healer. Father, I thank you before being my life. You are my life. You are my strength. You are my joy. And I thank you. Oh, glory to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you.